Hi, this is Steve from GSX, and welcome to our video series about GSX Monitor and GSX Analyzer. There will be a whole bunch of videos issued in the next few weeks. Some will be very detailed, some will be more general, some will be about different platforms. So I suggest that you uh, subscribe to our RSS feed off of our blog so you can keep an eye on new ones when they come out. And without further ado, let's get into the content. Thanks. This is our fifth session on monitoring BlackBerry Enterprise Server. In previous sessions, we've talked about our main view, our admin dashboard, and we spent a lot of time on server settings and various pages here, including setting up the BlackBerry. We haven't talked about are some of these other pages, so we're going to start with the uh, BlackBerry Settings mail page, where we can establish a pending threshold at the server level. Now, remember, you might have already set up pending mail thresholds for individual users, and that's a lot more detailed, but you may not want to do that for all users, so you kind of can play with these two different ways ways to watch pending mail thresholds. Another interesting thing you can do here is watch for messages that are not, or, or rather watch a server to make sure that messages have been forwarded. And if they have not been forwarded in some time interval, that you can establish what that interval is, and if you want to do it all the time or only during business hours. So in other words, if nothing's been forwarded whatsoever by our BEZ server in a 30-minute period, 24-7, we know something must be wrong, so we're going to invoke a certain alert. And of course, we've talked about alerts in other places, so it's 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 already uh, the same exact thing as that we've set up before. Unless you haven't seen this, so then I suggest you go back and watch one of the earlier sessions on Bez. But of course, we're going to notify whomever in whatever methods and overlapping and redundant methods that we've determined here, uh, if nothing gets forward in a particular time period. Log scanning page. Now, I mentioned earlier that we don't really like to use log information for our core monitor. And, and that is absolutely true because we think that log information is inherently historical. It's, it's, there's going to be some delay by the time it gets into the logs and we can read those logs and action on it. Now, now that doesn't mean that we don't think there's good information there. So in the log scanning page here, we're going to show you how you can set this up. In this example, every 15 minutes, or again, whatever interval you want it to be, we're scanning this log and we're going to limit the report to a certain number of lines and we can discard repetitions and we can tell it, oh, only process the documents not already scanned, which is a little bit of a cryptic way of saying, scan the stuff since my last scan 15 minutes ago. Or I can say, only do the last day or multiple days if you wanted it to be like that, so today's messages. And then I have two buckets, critical errors and non-critical errors. Now, the reason we break them up is mainly so you can action on them differently. So let's say I have a critical error. I might want to alert in a certain way and certain people. But if I get a non-critical error, maybe I want to alert somebody differently or maybe not even send an alert at all and just get a daily report. So that's why you have these multiple buckets. And we're actually looking for a string of characters. We say keyword, but it can be any string of characters with syntax and dashes and numbers and whatever is supposed to be in that string that you're looking for. And of course, I can have a big long list of these. And then I have an exclude string. So in this example, we're looking for the word error. But if the word error shows up, error 123715, let's pretend that, that we type that in here. I'm not going to bother doing it. I could, again, have a whole list of those. Anytime error 123, whatever I just said, shows up, I'm going to ignore it. It's not an alert condition because we've said we want to exclude that. And I can do that both for the criticals and the non-criticals. Okay. Um, another thing maybe I should mention real quickly, I've got five servers here. I don't have to go into that little page like I just did here for every single server. Let's say I wanted to look for certain keywords for critical errors. I could copy those and paste those among all these other servers. Let's say I had 50 BEZ servers. I would not have to manage them individually. I could apply settings globally if I chose to, which we certainly will. So in addition to that cutting and pasting way to try to do global settings, to try to make it easier to do all your settings, now of course we only have five or six servers here, so maybe it's not so important, but let's say we had 100 exchange servers, uh, clearly we're not going to want to configure every setting for all 100 of those. So you can create templates, and we're on a BEZ server, so it's giving me BEZ choices here, but it's context sensitive. If I was on an exchange server, it would give me different choices of how I want to set up my configurations for my scanning, and, and then of course you can apply those templates to to, you know, 50 servers here and 20 are this type and 10 are this type, and it makes it a lot easier to get going when you have large numbers of servers. Okay, let's move on to the carrier page within Bez. Here's where we would set up the carrier down alert, carrier up alert. We talked about alerting a bunch of times. I think it's back in Bez session two where it was covered, so I'd suggest you go back. We're not going to really go into it now, but 
this is where we would set up what the appropriate alert is when Bez, or the carrier rather is down and then the carrier indeed comes back up. And now here in this example, we have four carriers on this particular server. So we've identified who they are. We've also set up a, a threshold that, that allows us to sort of define our sensitivity. So in this example, if uh, uh, we exceed 80% of people are unreachable, even though 20 still seem to be, we're starting to say something's going on here. It may not just be the users, there may be something going on with the carrier. And you can change this number, of course, to increase or decrease your sensitivity. The validation user here would be if, uh, it's, it's really intended to try to be the, the final check if something's going on with this carrier. So let's say we had a, a device on a, a Vodafone in the, uh, help desk and that that device is always plugged in we know it's charged we know it's under coverage so if it's not accessible then i guess there really probably is something going on with that carrier so these are ways that we're trying to make sure that, that it's tuned uh, and the sensitivity is what you want it to be maintenance i think we've alluded to this a couple times before but let's just talk about it now let's say we bring down this bez server uh, every Thursday at 2 a.m. till 3 a.m. So I could set up an interval where I'm bringing that server down. Um, we're not actually doing that. We're creating an interval where we're not going to monitor or, or alert really is the issues. I'm not going to wake you up at 2 a.m. to tell you the server's down when you knew it was. You expected it to be. It was planned. And the other part of this is, of course, at the end of the interval, alerting and, and, and monitoring comes back on so that if it doesn't come out of the maintenance uh, job properly, you indeed will be invoking whatever alerts you've set up based on your timings, etc. Um, and we can and the daily one is cyclical, same days every week. Weekly is the same weeks every month. And scheduled maintenance is not cyclical; it's a one-time thing. Uh, also, by the way, the uh, the uh, periods do not affect your uh, um, your availability statistics for 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 usage. So this also you're not penalized for downtime when it's planned downtime. All right, uh, last page here: categorization. I think maybe I'll save that. It's there um, uh, for sort of tagging your servers that they fit into certain ways that you want to slice and dice data depending on people's responsibility. We'll cover that when we talk about um, the analyzer uh, reporting uh, uh, tool and uh, executive dashboard. One last thing I wanted to get into, you know, back here on the main view we talked about how you can right click and look at, uh, you know, user information, usage statistics, all that sort of stuff, and that's at the server level. Here um, I also have another way to view that and we'll pull up Bez statistics here, and let's pick one of our Bez servers. Now we see all the users on that server, and this is kind of a clearinghouse. I get all this data. I don't expect you to read those as I scan across those. The people in yellow are my, my non-critical users that are in alert condition, and here happens to be the situation they're having. I can... I guess I would use this page if I wanted to do comparatives among all the users on that server. Or let's say I wanted to look at uh, Yannick Goubet and I wanted to look at his specific information. So now I can see some usage information. I can see if he's got pending messages. I can see information about his handheld device and his carrier. I can see what IT policy he has. I can see if he's been affected by hung threads. I can see specific usage information for him. Um, and, and, and this allows you to kind of do your troubleshooting when you want to dig in. By the way, here I'm seeing on this device, or rather this, this server, here's those carriers I had. And I, I can see actually relatively how much traffic each one of them has had. Okay, so I think we've... We've kind of covered Bez. Um, you know, of course, we're going to bring out new features, and five minutes from now, I'll have to bring out another video. But right now, I'd invite you to uh, join us for the future ones about whatever your core messaging platform is, if it's Exchange or Domino, and also the sessions about the Analyzer reporting tool where you can take the data we've collected and give it to you in a way to really understand how things are changing over time. Thanks a lot.